Hey, in this adventure, my dad and I attempt an iron butt ride and we tour the desert southwest. After the 2022 Sturgis Rally, my dad wanted to do an, uh, an iron butt ride. He wanted to make something special though. Uh, he only lives a few miles from Why Not Mississippi, so the Why Why Not ride became a no-brainer. For this ride, you can choose which direction. You can start in Why Arizona or Why Not Mississippi, head to the other. And it answers that age-old question, why, with why not. A lot of people do an iron butt ride. They do an out and back so they can make it back home. Uh, why, why not, you obviously end up uh, quite far from where you started from. Uh, starting in Why Not Mississippi, we ended up in Why Arizona, and what do we do there? Well, we tour the desert southwest, but we can't just do any tour. We decided to do three themes, so the Why Why Not was one theme, and then we added uh, movies and music. Uh, for movies, what we would do is we would go to uh, Madrid, New Mexico, where there's uh, Maggie's, uh, Maggie's Cafe for Wild Hogs, and then we would match that up with Morganza, Louisiana, with the 1969 film Easy Rider. Uh, for music, uh, we would need to go to Winslow, Arizona, go stand on the corner, and we would match that up with the Leonard Skinner Monument in uh, Magnolia, Mississippi. I was surprised at all the things there is to do in and around Winslow, Arizona. I figured we could spend a number of days or a week uh, just seeing what's there, but we were only there for a short period of time, just enough to get the important pictures, and visit a couple shops. Take it easy. After we visited Rin Winslow, we realized we had a little extra time, so we would add a fourth theme. We added the Grand Canyon. Uh, and we matched that up with the Mississippi Little Grand Canyon, also known as Red Bluffs. Our second night was spent uh, at a dispersed campground uh, in the Grand Canyon. Uh, we left the Grand Canyon, headed to our uh, first movie stop, which was Madrid, New Mexico, and Maggie's Cafe. Maggie's Cafe, come to find out, was never uh, really a cafe, just for the movie, but it is now uh, a rather large souvenir shop. We had an interesting experience in Madrid. Uh, the ride there was amazing, the, uh, Maggie's was great, uh, but um, let's just say if I go back again, I'll leave town pretty quickly. Our third night on the road, we were on I-40. Uh, the wind was picking up pretty good and we noticed on radar there was some rain south of us. Uh, so we, we found a rest stop with some shelters and we set our cots up in those shelters. We took a slight detour and went to Oklahoma. Dad had never ridden a motorcycle in Oklahoma. Visited there a number of times, but never uh, with a motorcycle. So we went through there. We had some uh, amazing tacos at a little local Mexican restaurant there in Altus, Oklahoma. Uh, the tacos were great, but the pico was amazing. We spent the fourth and final night at the uh, Louisiana Welcome Center rest stop. We then headed to the uh, second stop of our a movie theme, Morganza, Louisiana, the site of the cafe of the 1969 film Easy Rider. We couldn't find the plaque, and the billboard wasn't that impressive. Uh, the dreary day dampened, but uh, didn't deter our spirits from reaching our second music theme, which was the Leonard Skinner Monument in uh, Magnolia, Mississippi. It's the site of the plane crash, October 20th, uh, 1977. It's uh, quite amazing that uh, there was 26 passengers and 20 of them survived. It is a great tribute to one of my favorite bands. <laughs> to round out our impromptu theme, uh, Red Bluff, Mississippi, or the Mississippi Little Grand Canyon, it doesn't have much in common with the Grand Canyon, uh, but it, uh, it did help round out our theme, and it, and it was a good visit. If you've been keeping track, you might have noticed I skipped the first night. See, the first day was the Iron Butt attempt. For those of you not familiar with the Iron Butt Association, uh, it is a, has a membership of over 84,000 people dedicated to safe, long-distance motorcycle riding. And when I say long-distance, 
the basically the entry level ride is called the Saddle Sore 1000. That's where you ride 1000 miles in under 24 hours. The Why Why Not Ride is an over 1500 mile ride. Uh, we had planned to do it uh, or attempted to do it in under 36 hours, which is the slowest you can do and it's still qualified. Uh, we had planned the timing of our ride to attempt to avoid rush hour in Dallas. Uh, Dallas, Texas had us very nervous. I've ridden through there a number of times. Every time I ride through there, I say never again. So we had our plan, uh, we had our snacks, we had our water. So we were going to just uh, get over there and try it out. So we, we left early in the morning, made it over to Why Not Mississippi, took some pictures at the fire station, then went to the nearest gas station to get our receipt, which would then start our time of this uh, 1500 mile ride. The idea behind long distance riding is to keep the bike in the wind as much as possible. Uh, weather is not in my control, traffic is not in my control, uh, so what we do is we attempt to keep our stops as short as possible. So we're making good time, we got to a Bucky's just outside of Dallas, Texas. Uh, it was there we met a guy who said he uh, he had attempted a, uh, it's called a um, Bun Burner Silver, so 1,500 miles in 36 hours. Um, but he, he found out as he went across that he actually made a good enough time and he got a Bun Burner Gold. So that's 1,500 miles in under 24 hours. Something my dad and I, we're not even thinking about. We're worried about, are we going to make it to 36 hours? So uh, to, dad and I kind of talked about it. It's like, that's, that's interesting how he, he did that. Uh, but we were at Bucky's, we finished our uh, brisket sandwich and then headed out after we checked the traffic to find out if we should uh, go around Dallas or if we should attempt to go through it. Traffic was looking good, so we decided to attempt to go through Dallas on I-20. So again, every time I've been through Dallas, I've always said never again. Um, but we were going to save uh, hours of time if we could make it through without any major stops. Uh, so I was very surprised when we made it through on I-20, uh, continuing to do highway speeds. Uh, I don't know if we uh, had to dip down below the, the posted speed limit at any time. There was a lot of traffic there to be sure, um, but everyone was moving smoothly. Okay, big question here. Everyone always thinks if you're going to do one of these rides, you have to ride really fast. Uh, that's actually uh, it's a little counterintuitive. You want to drive consistent with those slow stops or quick stops like I mentioned. Um, by going fast, you're reducing your fuel economy, therefore increasing the number of stops you need to make. And you're also increasing your fatigue. The, the high uh, wind will wear you out faster. So then you also need to stop more for rest breaks. So uh, it's just like the old adage, you know, slow and steady wins the race. So it's better to be that turtle and just continue to make progress. And that's what we did. So we made it through Dallas and on that other side of that first gas stop, I did a quick calculation and realized that um, it's possible we could turn that into a bun burner gold. Um, the, the whole Dallas thing became a non-issue. Uh, it was behind us. Uh, we had open road in front of us. Uh, and so I mentioned that to, to Dad and uh, he and I both agreed we would just continue to press on like we were and we kept checking on each other and verifying if we're ready to, to, to keep going. Now it's hard for us to believe we're making this good time because like I said, you, you have to make sure your stops are as quick as possible. And it seemed like half or more than half the gas stations we stopped at, it said, see attendant. And we had to have our receipts to, to prove our ride. And so when it said see attendant, that meant we had to go inside. That meant time eating away off the clock. Uh, it was very frustrating. Uh, thankfully, all the attendants were there uh, at the gas stations we stopped at, except one. So like I said, we had planned to make this a 36 hour ride. Uh, so we arrived at the spot we, did, we decided that we were gonna stop there for the night. Uh, when we got there, it was still quite daylight, um, wasn't that late. Uh, so yeah, we just said, hey, we're making good time. It looks like we can make it a, a bun burner gold. Uh, let's just keep trying for it and see what happens. That last receipt we needed to get, we were in Y, Arizona. If you've never been to Y, Arizona, uh, I know why you haven't been there. There's nothing in Y, Arizona. It's 30 minutes north of the Mexican border. Uh, so we get there at a gas station with no attendant and we're nervous because like I said, like half the gas station we've been to, no receipts, see attendant. 
so dad had a great idea of let's just get a little bit of fuel and uh, if the pump says see attendant we can get fuel at another pump so they only had I don't know three or four pumps to choose from so my dad pulls up I pull up uh, dad tries to get fuel it says see attendant there's no attendant it's two o'clock in the morning there is no attendant so he goes to the next one and he gets the same thing see attendant and me I go to one uh, I believe it said no attendant I tried another one it spelled the receipt but it had that little pink ink on the side meaning you're almost out of receipt paper almost out of receipt paper but I got it I got the receipt and then my dad eventually was able to get the receipt with 10 minutes left. That's right, we finished it in 23 hours and 50 minutes, just in time to call it a bun burner gold, assuming uh, all our documentation was in place and the Iron Butt Association uh, could certify it, could verify that we had indeed completed it in that time. Now, if you look at Google, if you use Google at our start point or our end point, it will say basically 23 hours to complete this ride. You add gas stops in there, and uh, I, like I said, I could never make this work out on paper. Anytime I try to plan a, a bum burner gold, it, it doesn't work out on paper. It just it just doesn't. But somehow or other, with the consistent riding, with uh, as short of stops as we could afford, uh, just pressing on, we made it. We completed the Why Why Not Challenge in under 24 hours. So we were ecstatic. Uh, so that first night, though, we, we, uh, I like to say we stayed at a casino, um, but it's not quite what you would think. Uh, this casino was the size of Walgreens, and it was closed when we were there. We slept in the parking lot of a casino that first night. Um, but we were very excited to have made uh, such a major accomplishment, something I didn't think I would ever, ever do. Uh, it wasn't on my dad's radar either to try something uh, that much. 1,500 miles in 24 hours, that is... That's crazy. Um, but I said consistent riding, not fast riding. After our sleep, and we did sleep well that first night, uh, we realized we had the, the 12 extra hours, right? We had planned for 36 hours riding. We got it done in uh, 24, 12 extra hours. Uh, we decided to add, that's why we decided to add the Grand Canyon. Uh, we had that, that extra time, and it was well worth uh, adding. So this has encouraged us to try other IBA rides. This was my third one, my dad's first. Uh, it won't be it won't be his last. Well until my next adventure, this is Redbeard. See you on the road.